This week, RuneScape saw some major updates to Fort 4 and 3, Slayer, and the introduction of the Greater Sonic Wave Ability Codex. If you've already gone down into the new crypt to try to get the codex for yourself, you'll have noticed that the new Slayer mobs that drop it are no joke, particularly the Armored Phantoms. If you already know what I'm talking about and are struggling to get in the swing of things with these Armored Phantoms, or if you haven't tried it yet and need a guide, sit tight, we'll jump right in. Good day, everybody. So this is a budget, nearly full revolution, semi-AFK guide, all of that, uh, because it is now the second day of release and I have only spent the first day of this release uh, getting the hang of things at Armored Phantom specifically that have trickier mechanics to handle. If you have more money to spend or if you can afford to try this with range instead of magic, if you don't need animate dead, you can go for it. I'm seeing a lot of players have success with that, but if you're on a budget and especially if you want to take advantage of this before animate dead gets totally nerfed, uh, now is the time to use this strategy to get into the swing of things. With all that said, the first thing you need to do to access the mobs that drop the Greater Sonic Wave Codex is complete the Unwelcome Guests quest. That is the new Fort 4 and 3 quest involving the Raptor. You'll then have access to the Raptor as a Slayer Master, and please, before you do this, make sure to get tasks from him uh, for these undead creatures. The drop rate of the Greater Sonic Wave Codex has been confirmed via JMod comments uh, and Reddit in some places uh, to be much greater on task than off task. And the Raptor assigns Slayer tasks now for Zimurigal's Undead, which covers all the new mobs introduced, as well as specifically Armored Phantoms and Risen Ghosts, both of which drop the Codex. After that, you'll want to run north outside of 4, 4 and 3 into the Crypt. Uh, there you'll find yourself in an instanced encounter. This will only last for a week, a month, I forget, but uh, this was done with the Asylum release too to make sure players don't totally swarm this area. Uh, still, each instanced encounter that you go into can house up to six players, I believe, five or six, so it's still crowded as of right now. This should uh, alleviate a little bit as time goes on, but the first thing you need to do is hop worlds to find uh, an appropriate, not very crowded place. Um, it is not too, too crowded, as you might expect, because you do need to be on task for uh, the best drop rates of the Codex. So, And the Slayer tasks are pretty short in the ballpark of 120 kills or so, so there are a lot of players cycling out and leaving as uh, they go to get new tasks, so you can jump in then. Briefly here, I'll mention the Risen Ghosts, because these are the first uh, enemies that you see when you walk into this dungeon. They don't have any particularly special mechanics, at least not very harmful ones. They have one where if they're alive for too long attacking you, they'll start healing off of their attacks onto you, but it's not very much. They have 30,000 life points, they don't hit too hard, so you should be able to take them, especially in a crowded space where there's only a few aggroing you at once. Uh, that's not a big deal, their drops are okay, whatever. But on to the armored phantoms if you keep going into the next room. So these phantoms have pretty unique mechanics that are worth describing. Uh, it's a very bizarre and interesting setup where it's multi-combat, the area, they all aggro you, uh, and they are designed such that you really should not and cannot have more than one attacking you at the same time. Here's why, besides the fact that they hit hard. The first mechanic you'll see uh, as one of them is attacking you for too long, and I don't know how many attack cycles or how uh, long it actually takes for this to happen, but anyways, shortly uh, you'll see that their phantom core or their phantom spirit, whatever it's called, will be exposed. You'll see them do a little animation and a little phantom spirit will spawn. Uh, this needs to be stunned. That's the first thing you need to do. So have a stun ability hotkey uh, and stun the phantom core immediately as soon as it pops up. This is because it has 500,000 HP, the core, so it's not intended for you to kill it. <laughs> um, and it constantly heals the corresponding fan armored phantom for much more than you can deal damage to it. It heals it for like 7,800 very quickly. So the way to deal with that mechanic if you can't kill the phantom fast enough is to just stun that uh, phantom spirit so that it goes away. The second mechanic you'll see after this, and hopefully not too much because you should be able to kill them fast enough, is uh, they'll do something that looks like a quake but with the blood ice override. There is no warning, no telegraphing on this. It's just if they've been attacking you for long enough and they get to that point in their cycle, they'll do it. Uh, and this takes off half of your remaining HP, so it is very scary. <laughs> it was very scary going into this dungeon for the first time, aggroing a bunch of them and having a ton of them hit me for 6,000, 3,000, whatever, and not knowing at the time that the mechanic takes off just half the HP. So anyways, um, this also adds a debuff to you for about 30 seconds, which uh, drastically cuts down the value of your healing from all sources. So 
Uh, scary mechanic to get hit by, especially if you're in panic and running around, but uh, it should be very rare that you see this mechanic, even with average pretty bad DPS like I have in the examples I'll show you. And it should only really happen when you're first getting into the room or if you mess up and you have multiple of these skeletons on you at once. These uh, armored phantoms have 50,000 HP and uh, are very beefy. So their highest affinity is actually towards melee, crush attacks, affinity of 70. That means that you have the highest hit chances with melee. But as of right now, from what I can see, it's not really viable. And I've seen people only ranging or uh, using magic against them. They have extremely high defense against magic. So make sure you bring a salve amulet E. Again, make sure you're on task. Uh, and I played around with a few things here. If you have an Inquisitor Staff, it seems like the accuracy boost can help there. If you have a Fractured Staff of Armadou already, then you might as well use that. I see a lot of players doing that too. And gear-wise, the other uh, big tip I have is that I originally went in here with a Scripture of Wen, just for the DPS, but I switched to the Scrimshaw of Magic, which if you make it yourself, gives a plus four accuracy boost to your magic. And I saw a big difference in doing this. Um, it helps a lot. And by a big difference, what I mean after doing the actual math is that it took me from about uh, three kills per minute to almost four kills per minute, switching to the Scrimshaw of Magic. So, uh, big increase over time, actually. <laughs> I also strongly suggest bringing a Ripper Demon for this task, uh, since again, their highest affinity is to melee, so Ripper Demons hit them quite hard. Now, the most important part about slaying these phantoms, more than gear, more than your DPS, more than whatever, is the positioning to make sure that you only have one of these on you at a time. So in the videos here, you can see an example of a spot that I've found. Uh, whenever it's open, take it right away. <laughs> um, I place down my kinetic cyclone and I stand in this spot. Uh, this is because all spawns that appear will be aggroed uh, towards me and will line up on each other. If it's your first time or first few times, bring a ton of food. If you've been doing this a while, bring a ton of food. Anyways, uh, you should be able to soul split, especially with Animate Dead and a basic magic setup, with just one on you at a time, especially if you're able to kill them fast enough to dodge the quake mechanics and all that. But uh, there is a good chance you'll be doing some running around. And when you first get in the room, there is a good chance that you'll have multiple of these on you at once until you can kill them, clear them out, and wait for them to respawn on top of each other. Now, I don't know if it's due to the nature of the way that these things are instanced, but I found that sometimes when I go in and out, uh, the spawns are not exactly the same, or the spot that you see me using here. Uh, I went back and it did not have the same amount of spawns, so I was getting very little kills. In that case, you can move around and experiment a little, little bit. I found another spot here, as you can see, or I'm trying to, uh, where I can get uh, multiple phantoms aggroed and just line them up one at a time. So. I see other players finding their own spots too. You can look around and see what works, but uh, I just wanted to show you one spot that was easy to get into that I found that uh, does rack up a good amount of kills and lines up the phantoms faster than I can kill them, at least. An important note here is the cannon or cannon alternative. You will see a lot of players using Odlak coils. Uh, I am using a kinetic cyclone for two reasons. Uh, one, I have the upgrade kit for it on this iron account, so it does 150% damage. I do not have such an upgrade for the Odlak coil. Number two, uh, they, like I said, their highest affinity is towards melee. Um, I see that the Odlak coil also hits fairly consistently on these things, but the kinetic cyclone pretty much doesn't miss and does a lot of damage, so I use it for that. This is great if you have it available or if you have any of these cannon alternatives available and a bunch of cannonballs handy because as the ghosts are lined up on each other, they will just be taking damage and taking damage and taking damage as you take down each of these ghosts one at a time as they line up. Uh, this helps a lot because like I said, their mechanics, the special annoying ones that seem to trigger, uh, do appear to be based on a certain point in their attack cycle. So the more you can whittle them down before they actually start attacking you, the better and the more mechanics you will dodge. All right, that's really all I have on this. I'll try to keep it as short and sweet as possible so you can get right to it. Um, again, this is day two after this release. So after this video, some better strategies or uh, new things might come about. That's a better way to do this. But um, yeah, keep us posted. Uh, I don't know if I'll make another video on this. I'm going to try to get the greater Sonic Wave Codex because I want to do some testing on that myself. And if you have any other strategies or if you found anything that really works for you here, please uh, share it so everybody can know and everybody can benefit. I'm particularly curious to see if anyone has successfully been able to melee these. Again, as I think that would be the actual fastest uh, way to get kills on these things and the most accurate. Uh, but with the phantom spirit little mechanic thing that spawns very far away right now, I don't know how realistic that is because you'd have to leave your safe zone <laughs> very often. 
uh, unless you can avoid that and then uh, just start killing them very quickly. So anyways, it's one thing I want to try, but not that badly. If you have watched all the way through and are still with me, thank you very much. I very much appreciate you for your support. Uh, if you enjoyed this video as well and want to see more helpful guides and generally fun RuneScape stuff, uh, please consider liking this video and subscribing. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks very much.